Hello and welcome to the second of the kitchen table teachings videos. This one's about needs assessments. If you want to turn in your manual to chapter three, there's a whole chapter on needs analysis and how to establish learning needs. That is important to read. The other thing I'd like you to look at are the YouTube videos that are listed on the readings and viewings page. So that's a starting point for you to get a little bit of a handle on what a needs analysis a needs analysis is and what needs assessments are. How to establish learning needs. Very first, very important first step. So as you can see on this slide, a needs assessment has to do with a need and a need is present when there's a discrepancy between a, a present state and a future state. If we use this metaphor, we can understand it a bit better. A needs assessment is kind of like building a bridge and the bridge goes from current situation to a desired situation. If at the present time a course is not fulfilling the needs or if technology has changed or if knowledge has progressed or if skills have developed, procedures have changed, there's a gap that exists in the present state to the future state, which is the desired state. So what we have to do is establish what is this gap and how do we fill it? It's filled generally by course content and we establish goals, objectives, and if we're using the outcomes based approach, we're talking about outcomes. That's how we fill the gap. There are nine steps to a needs assessment and this is fully explained in your textbook in chapter three. I'll go over the highlights of it right now. Well, obviously you have to determine what you're talking about. What is the topic? What is the area? What's the big idea? Uh, why is it important that we go from a future, from a current state to a future state on this particular topic? What are the issues, the questions, the information that are relevant and needed? Is it a learning need? And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Then we describe where we want to go. What's the desired state? Uh, what are the gaps that, that are in between where we are right now and where we want to go? That's the content you're establishing. What knowledge what skills, what attitudes and values do you want the students to adopt and hold and show uh, by the course? Then you gather this information together. You talk about, you talk to the different stakeholders, you do research, you do all sorts of things to try to figure out all the information that you need. You bring it all together. Then you decide, well, how should we deliver this content? Is it best delivered online? Is it best delivered face to face? Is it classroom? Is it outdoors? Are there field trips involved? All those sorts of things have to be uh, brought together. The other thing you want to take a look at are the administrative aspects, infrastructure aspects, uh, equipment, uh, teacher availability, teacher cost, all kinds of things go into a needs assessment. Then we review the whole thing, put it together into a report and make a recommendation. Let's take a look at this little picture. Hopefully that will help you a little bit. If you have the big idea, remember we talked about the big idea before, well, is there a need for it? Is there a learning gap? What is the learning gap? Knowledge, skills, attitudes. Who do you talk to? Okay, you talk to stakeholders. You talk to who? Which stakeholders? Who, how are they affected? You do it how? By talking to SMEs, by way of surveys, assessments, and research. You think about administrative aspects, space, teachers, equipment. That affects the, the cost of a course and the viability of a course. Put all, all this together into a report, and then you recommend to the powers that be. Could be your stakeholders, could be your boss, could be whoever it is that, that uh, could uh, buy this course or put it on if it's in a college, for example. You get a green light for course development, and then you make a choice about a curriculum approach, either outcomes-based or competency-based. And we'll get to that in the next Kitchen Table Teachings. So that's a very brief summary of what a needs assessment is all about. Let's take a look at this next thing here, because not everything is a learning need. Let's take a look at this chart, uh, the title, Possible Causes of Poor Employee Performance. Well, here's kinds of problems, lack of skills or knowledge possible solutions, training, job aids, and coaching. So there's obviously a learning gap that can exist there with lack of skills or knowledge. And if you look at the bottom, a lack of motivation, that could have to do with values or attitudes. So there may be some training or learning 
that is, is important there. If you look at the middle ones, poor incentives, poor safety records, there may be training here, but the, it may not be a learning gap as much as a supervisory gap or a, uh, a gap relating to uh, necessary equipment or necessary um, funding, or budgets, and those sorts of things. Bottom line here is you have to decide for your course, uh, is it a learning gap that exists? And differentiate that from other sorts of gaps that may exist that would not be uh, properly dealt with by designing a course. So that's, uh, that's it for this kitchen table teachings. It's very brief. Just wanted to give you a high level oversight and into uh, needs analysis and some of the issues that are involved in it. Take a look at chapter three in your textbook, in your manual, and the YouTube videos and post to your various uh, forums. And I look forward to engaging with you in those forums. Again, if you have any issues or questions or things that are bothering you that you don't want to post to the forum, please just let me know and I will, I will uh, answer your email right away. Talk to you next week.